All righty. All right, everybody. So welcome to the channel. We have here Buy Box winner, aka Dev, correct? Yep. You know, my boy here has been crushing it, young as hell, doing freaking five figure months on his way to like six figure months, doing what, 100% wholesale in your business, correct? Yeah, exactly. 100% wholesale. So I started with wholesale. I started my journey 17 months ago and um, started with wholesale and stuck with it ever since. Oh, wow. So that's crazy. You know, well, why did you start with wholesale? Most people in the space end up starting with like OA, retail arbitrage. So, well, what made you want to do that? So, uh, well, you know, my beginning was just like everyone else, right? I saw that video. If you know, you know, right? That's <laughs> the famous uh, Amazon FBA video. But from there, right, I just went down the rabbit hole of just Amazon in general. And then I was just watching a few YouTube videos, but then the wholesale model kind of stuck out to me a lot, right? But I realistically, I didn't even know there was OA or RA in this business, right? So I just knew wholesale and I just went in and then here we are. Wow. <laughs> So you didn't even know arbitrage existed. That's crazy. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> now until you know, I started uh, getting on Instagram, right, networking with other sellers and stuff. So that's what made me realize that oh wow, there's other more mo models too. Right. But you know, I felt like I picked the best one. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So you know, go, going off of that, you know, you said you got on social media and you started noticing more about you know other models and whatnot. Like, mm -hmm. uh, how has being on so uh, social media helped? your business if any you know just being active with the community or even posting like how does it help your business so you know i wouldn't say it helps your business like um not physically i would say right, but right. the knowledge that you gain from just seeing other people's stories or just networking with other sellers that can increase your business by millions right so right. there may be things that you may not know because you're just working by yourself but just because of, you know, you're watching YouTube videos or going on Twitter, you know, seeing some posts or just Instagram in general, right? All the reels that other people post, they can unlock some ideas in your head that may, you know, grow your business expen exponentially, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Because, yeah, I mean, someone else may have a different point of view or even if they're a bit, you know, a step ahead of you. It's like, wow, I could I didn't know that, you know, right? So mm -hmm. just from one post. So, yeah, agreed. Yeah, and I wouldn't even say just bigger sellers, right? Even sometimes smaller sellers may post something that may unlock something where like, wow, I should definitely do that next time in yep. my business. So um, social, social media is definitely great just to be there. And also once you surround yourself with just Amazon all the time, right? That's going to be in your mind all the time and you're bound to grow no matter what. Yep. And then seeing all the screenshots, it kind of just like motivates you, or at least it should motivate you. <laughs> to Exactly. Just, you know, like even better. for me, right? When I see like, you know all these big sellers million dollar a month right that may seem uh, big to me like when i first saw that screenshot i'm like wow that's the goal all right yeah. or even just six figure uh, screenshots but now i'm doing that i'm like wow this is nothing i should aim for you know higher right maybe like a million million a month right or something like that so uh, seeing those posts like you know kind of motivates me especially just um being around you know all the content regarding just amazon in general yeah agreed for sure and, you know, th there's that saying, you are what you follow or hang around with, right? So if you yeah. consume a lot of Amazon content, I mean, there's almost no way you should fail doing Amazon unless you just don't want to put in the work at that point. So Exactly, yeah. And especially for people that are doing it solo, right? I think it's really important for you to just get on social media. You don't even have to post. Just follow a bunch of people that are doing what you want to do, yeah. which will just help you grow. Yeah, yeah, I agree because uh, that's kind of a mistake I did when I first started. Like, I had a social account, but I didn't really like network or like put myself out there or even just really follow a lot of groups. So, yeah, I really winged it a lot. Uh, and had, had I done that, like what you're doing, just you know, being active on social, yeah, it probably would have sped up that process way much faster. So. Exactly. And like joining a group as well, right? Maybe join, you know, the Trappers Discord or something, right? You could just connect with other people as well. But nowadays, there are even so many free Discord groups, you know, you don't even have to pay. But just to get into a community where people are on the same level as you and just, you know, talking about wholesale all the time or just Amazon in general, it help you grow. Yeah, 100%. So, you know, I got to ask, going back to what you said in the beginning, because you didn't know about arbitrage, you went straight into wholesale. Looking back on it, would you have actually tried arbitrage? Just looking at how the model is, low risk, barrier to entry, would you have actually started that model? 
honestly, so I might have kind of lied, right? So my very first wholesale product product, right? It was it was supposed to be a wholesale product, but I noticed that Walgreens was actually having it for a uh, sale, right? So I right. went to my retail Walgreens and just picked up a product like 10 units and then tested those out. But it was supposed to be a wholesale product. I just tested it out just so I could, you know, get the confirmation that it is going to sell. And once those products, you know, got checked in, they started selling like five a day or whatever. I was wow. like, wow. So then I went back to my wholesaler, right, that I found in an order from there. So many people think, you know, especially with wholesale, that doing test buys and everything means you have to buy like a bunch of cases or one item and do those, right? right. But the truth is you always just test out a product first, test out 15 or 20 units of a product, see how it does, and then, you know, go all in on the product. And even if you lose money on a test buy, which I hope you don't, but even if you're making <laughs> like, you know, 2% or 5% return on it, still do it because you, you'll you get, uh, you know, the data from um, Amazon to see how fast you can move that product. Yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, question: Did you lose money on that test buy, or did you like break even? I or did it. No, I did it. But it was um, I you know I didn't make as much, maybe like ten percent return on it. But right. I got that idea that oh wow, this definitely sells. And it was my first product, and you know you refresh your uh, Amazon, you know, uh, Seller Central <laughs> app right in the beginning, that and then mean it. that orange bar, you're like wow, so <laughs> pretty crazy. Yeah, and once you see those orange bars start coming in. You just kind of get like addicted to it at that point. You're just like, holy exactly. crap, how can I Especially increase Especially even that? with the shipment tab, right? <laughs> you just <gotta laughs> keep on rolling, reloading it until you're like, oh man, is it checked in? Is it checked yeah. in? <laughs> but yeah, that was a big nugget right there, guys. I mean, testing, just going to Walgreens, going to Walmart. I mean, if you're not sure if a product moves, I mean, just do what he did. Literally just test it real quick, buy a few units, and then, you know, go from there. You don't need to be spending thousands of dollars on some inventory that you don't have you know all the exact data to back it up right uh, especially in the wholesale model i mean i don't know if you ran into this issue yourself but there will be times where some products it looks good roi looks good margins look good keep a charge look good but you notice you know major sellers in there that are just hogging up like 80 percent 70 percent of the buy box so uh i mean are you do you have any of those issues when you're you know testing out products or anything yeah, most definitely right. Their sellers always just uh taking over the buy box because they have more stock or just their storefront, right? They have over like uh, thousands of ratings, thousands, right? Way, yeah. way, way more than you. But the only way to overcome it, right? The first thing I always tell everyone, just have patience, right? Eventually they will go out of stock. There have been products where, you know, I have to literally hold it for three or four months just wow. for, you know, uh, someone to sell out and then I could get a chance. But I've noticed that holding it, yes, you know, your storage fees, they do kind of, increase and stuff mm -hmm. but at the end of the day once the other person sells out the biggest seller then suddenly the price jumps up so i would say you know you get your money back but you just have to that your cash flow is basically on hold right until uh the person sells out of the listing yeah correct and yeah the cash flow aspect is probably probably really important for sure uh because you know you don't want to type too much inventory either but it ends up affecting your cash flow. So, uh, you know, going on that topic, uh, how do you manage your cash flow? If you don't mind me asking, like just, you know, maybe a few tips on maybe something you do that maybe someone else isn't doing in order to help their cash flow issues. Mm -hmm. So for cash flow, I would say the biggest tip is always use like a, um, like a man inventory manager tool, right? So either seller board or inventory labs, right? I heard both of those are super good. And regarding your cash flow, right? One thing I do that many people, I don't know if they do, I always check my bank accounts at the end of the month, right? I look through every single charge I got. I make a separate spreadsheet, uh, right? And then see where I'm spending my money, basically. And regarding just buying too much inventory, many people make the mistake if they have, let's say, 10,000 limit on their credit card, they try to spend it, but they don't realize at the end of the month, you have to pay that 10K or else yeah. you're going to get interest charged. So uh, one thing to keep in mind is to always keep track of your expenses because they will add up, right? You you may find something profitable thinking, oh, I'm going to buy a bunch, but at the end of the day, you don't have enough money to buy that product. And that's the only issue that you will face. But if you are at that point, that's a good uh, good issue to have, right? So you're doing something right because you have too much stuff to buy, but you don't have enough money, which is currently where I'm at, right? I mean, if you give me a hundred grand, I could spend it in a day, but <laughs> it, it's, it's just a capital issue. But wherever you are in the business, I feel like capital and cash flow are going to be the biggest issue uh, issues for you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, cash flow is probably the number one thing that I think I've heard, 
I've heard kills this business model for a lot of people. So, yeah, you need to really stay on top of it before you end up just putting yourself in a position where you can't get out. So, but. yeah, and there have been points right where. So for me, I'll talk about uh, some credit cards, right? So I don't have nothing fancy, right? I would love to get an Amex, but most of my suppliers, I work with three to four main suppliers and none of them accept Amex. So there's no point in me getting an Amex card, but they only accept Visa and MasterCard. And, you know, uh, I remember, I think it was in December or Q4, right? Mm -hmm. I was just trying to spend as much as mon as much money as I can. And, you know, all my cards were full and everything. I even had to use wow. my personal credit card to... <laughs> buy some stuff so you know uh, you got to do what you got to do but my sales in january or december definitely spoke for it so the more you spend the more you'll make that's the that's the motto of the wholesale business model yeah yeah because once you have those replenishable products you're already buying from your wholesalers i mean there is like you said during q4 you're just buying double the amount and just really you know spending what you can at that point so. Exactly. And, uh, you know, with the wholesale model, it's not like OA or RE where you always have to consistently keep on finding new products, right? Uh, or like coupons in general with wholesale, right? The discount you get is your relationship. And that's yeah. the biggest reason why I love this model, right? Just the relationship aspect with your sales rep or just with your suppliers in general, because that's that's an unbreakable discount that no money can buy, right? Oh, yeah. 100%. And, uh, yeah, for sure. And then also what treating your sales rep, right? I always give them gift cards and stuff for holidays, Christmas and stuff. I know you do that too. I definitely yeah. saw on your story. So just, just a small gesture like that can definitely help you out a long way, right? So what's like $50, you're spending $50 on a gift card, but the discounts you're going to get are going to be worth thousands in the future. Yeah. So it's a small price to pay, but it's definitely worth it. Yeah, especially if you're in this business model, there's no reason you shouldn't be investing in, you know, to your relationship with your sales rep for sure. So, and I'm curious, when you when you started the wholesale model, was it really hard to like find suppliers products that are profitable? Because I know, I, I, I say 90% of the people that I was here, but they always have issues of, you know, they can't find profitable suppliers, they can't find suppliers around them or anything did you have many issues when you were starting like that or how did that go i mean 100 100 always uh you know that's the biggest issue that I tell everyone that they're gonna face right either finding a profitable product or a profitable supplier right so uh to overcome that i basically had a google sheet with over 300 suppliers i just keep oh, on adding every single day right and every single day i'd make it my goal to at least call or email right five to ten suppliers then the reason why i did that was because i knew at the end of the day if I literally do the same thing over and over again for 30 days, there's no reason for me to not open an account with any one of them. Right? Exactly. And eventually it definitely, you know, worked out. And then eventually I had too many accounts open, so I didn't even know. Wow. What to do. So, <laughs> uh, right. Another good problem to have, but you know, when you get to that point where you have so many different accounts, your goal should be to basically, uh, first separate all the ones, you know, in certain categories. So grocery suppliers here, beauty suppliers here, right. Separate them out, put them in different categories. And then from there, basically try to find the best one that uh um we call the one that has the best pricing right so obviously it's kind of hard to know who has the best pricing before you you know uh buy something yeah. but i would say you know if you genuinely go into a website look at one or two pages you can kind of tell how their pricing is right if you've been looking through different suppliers they have the same products you could tell the pricing maybe you know supplier a pricing is 50 cents higher than suppliers b pricing right so i would just say kind of uh, differentiate which supplier has the best pricing and then go work with them. And many people think that, right, there's a magic supplier that has super cheap price uh, pricing yeah. or whatever, but that's not the case. The right, I work with three or four main suppliers. And when I first started out with them, the pricing was horrible. So my best supplier could be your worst supplier. The only reason why oh, the yeah. supplier <laughs> is the best to me is because I've worked with them for months and years, right? And I have the relationship, which I can get discounts. So for me, like right now, if I ever want anything, right, I don't even look at the website's pricing. I'm like, I'll just tell them I want this pricing. How many cases do I need to buy? And then we're done, right? So uh, to get to this point, it, it was definitely, you know, not easy because I had to consistently keep on placing orders, but uh, that's why wholesale is a, a relationship, you know, right? Those discounts are uh, the relationships are the discounts that you get. Yeah, that was a great point you made. My great supplier could be your worst supplier. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one right there, dude. And yeah, I mean, it's just it's true. I mean, uh, because you're right. Uh, I know when I started my journey, I freaking uh would go after so many suppliers, just 
knocking them down, uh, reaching out to them. I was sourcing for like maybe two hours. They didn't find nothing. Moved on to the next supplier. Uh, you know, without so much knowledge, very little knowledge of finding the products. And now looking back on it now, we definitely gone back to some of those older suppliers and we ended up finding some stuff and we were just like, oh, snap. We had a good supplier this whole time, but we just didn't know how to look for it or what we were looking for, right? So, uh, yeah. Exactly. I feel like people have good suppliers, but they don't know how to utilize them, mm -hmm. right? Instead of just going through one page. Like for me, if I found a supplier, I literally go through their entire website. I'm not kidding. Every single category. Yeah, it might take me a whole week, but at the end of the day, I'll have a list of 300 products that I can buy, right? Yeah. And one tip I'll give you, right? Let's say even if you um, go through a website, right? A supplier's website, you have a bunch of different products that you will potentially want to buy. Uh, instead of just placing a big order for it, break it down, right? Place like 10 items, then the next week place another 10. The reason why is because they'll see you're consistent, right? And this yeah. helps you build that relationship. So instead of you just placing a 300 item, you know, PO once, break it down into like 10 items, 10 items. So that way they're like, oh, wow, this per person is, you know, consistent. And that's how you get that relationship going. Yeah. And it could be a small order, right? Like you say, it could be. Exactly. Uh, yeah. It doesn't have to be big. $500 order, $1,000 order, you know, something small. I mean, you're right. Because in their eyes, they're like, oh, snap, this person is constantly buying from us. They're constantly, you know, buying up inventory. So we should make him a, or her a priority, right? For our business, because uh, if we continue doing business with them, I mean, it'll work out long term. So, yeah, that's a very great point, dude. Like, just straight up. Exactly. And, like, being consistent is crazy, too, because I remember one day, right? So, with my sales rep, I usually email them, like, once or twice a week or sometimes more, right? And even on the phone, I talk to them. And one day, my sales rep was, like, out of the office, and the manager actually picked up, right? And then they were, like, uh, I was asking about a question or, like, a discount or something. I don't really remember. But then, you know, I asked them, and they are like, oh, are you, they said my company's name. And because the manager, like, uh, recognized my name because the sales rep always brings it up, right? So even the pe other people in the company I don't talk to knows knows me, right? Just wow. because I'm consistently placing orders every single week. Wow, damn! I bet that manager was like, "Wow, here's the person that you know." Here's the always... person that's always asking for a discount. <laughs> oh damn! No, but that's good. I mean, now you have people talking around, you know, word of mouth spreads, and you know that actually opens up more opportunities for you down the line. So, yeah, dude. Exactly. I, mean, that's I had a question crazy. for you though, because yeah. I know you're doing everything, uh, you know, from your house, from your garage. So. How did you overcome the residential or just a commercial address issue? Because I know a lot of sellers, right? They always ask me, ah, oh, what if the supplier doesn't deliver to me because I have a house? How did you overcome that? Yeah. So, I mean, I think I've just gotten lucky, to be honest, as far as like with that aspect, uh, because I kind of, I guess you could say I, I kind of niche down on when, when it comes to sourcing suppliers. So I'll go on their, you know, frequently asked questions see what they say about residential or I'll, or I'll even reach out to them and call them like, Hey, you know, uh, we do our business from our residential area. You guys work with that. And, you know, some suppliers, they'll be like, no, you need a you know warehouse commercial address. So mm -hmm. for those suppliers, we'll put them on a separate spreadsheet and just, you know, save them for later. Uh, mm -hmm. But as far as the other ones, I mean, most of them, they're willing to just do it if, you know, for free. If you buy a certain amount, so like maybe $3,000 worth of inventory, 5,000, uh, other ones that may charge us a, what do you call it? Like a lift gate fee or residential mm -hmm. fee, you know, something very small, like 50 bucks or something. It's not, it's usually not that much. Uh, but aside from that, and then one of our suppliers, they don't ship to residential, but they allow us to pick up from their warehouse. So, mm -hmm. uh, we're able to bypass that by actually picking up products. So, uh, really though, as far as getting bypassed with companies, there's not really much you can do, uh, and maybe you could talk it out if it's a smaller like local company and maybe they can work something out but chances are they'll want that warehouse uh address or whatever you know strictly regardless yeah for sure and i feel like uh you know when people say oh man suppliers are gonna ask for a commercial link before when i didn't have my warehouse i was doing everything from my house too right mm -hmm. and it's not like you can't find suppliers that come to residential areas you just have to look hard enough right it's they're they're out there it's not like there's none that are there because i mean you're living proof right all your suppliers deliver yeah. to you you pick it up so it's definitely possible and one thing i would say to overcome it i mean this is something i just had to do right so there is this 
I, I would say it's a brand direct actually, because I buy from the brand directly. Right? right. And when I create an account with them, um, you know, obviously I was still in my house, right. Getting stuff uh, here. So to overcome that, right. Uh, they're asked for, Oh, we don't re deliver to residential. What's your warehouse or commercial address. And I, you know, I just had to say something on the spot. Right. So what I did was I was like, we're in the process of moving to a different warehouse, but here is, uh, the, here's our, our address of our old warehouse. Right. So I gave them a address of like one of my friends, uh, um, one of my dad's friends, right? He has a liquor store or something. So I just right. gave him access to that, right? But then once I got the account opened, I just switched it to residential. And then now I, I you know, I would just get the boxes here. And what's crazy <laughs> is I would think that they would get, give pallets or something, but literally UPS was delivering it, which was insane, right? So the requirement was commercial address and everything, but then UPS just delivers it in regular boxes, which was pretty crazy. But, you know, that's just something I did and it kind of worked, right? Just say, oh, we're in the process of, uh, you know, moving warehouses or something along those lines. And hopefully they accept that. <laughs> wow. So, so what would you have done if, like, they had actually brought a whole pallet? Because chances are they probably wouldn't have brought a lift gate. But, like, would you have just broken it down right there and just... Yeah, I'd be like, you know, let me get my knife, you know, and then... <laughs> You got to do what you got to do, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've heard stories of that. Some dudes, like, that they will literally break down pallets and just <laughs> dump it out the trucks and whatnot. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, if you made it work like that, it's like there's almost no excuse that you can't find suppliers that work with you, right? So Exactly. And I've heard people that, like, give, like, even mall addresses, right, of some random store oh, and then goodness. just literally just wait there until the truck comes <laughs> and have their pickup truck put the pallet there. Yeah. I mean, you know. There's no limit on. It's just a matter of you know how bad you actually want want to work, want to make this work, basically. Yep. Uh, you know, I think another thing you could do too is uh, maybe even use like a a prep center, even just a you know as a substitute. I did hear from someone that they said instead of calling it as a prep center, you know, refer to it as a three PL because uh, most of these companies they're aware of what a three PL is, but they don't know what a prep center is. To them, yeah. they're like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. So you know, if you if you bring up three PL, I mean, that might even be you know worth bringing up as well into the conversation. So, yeah, yeah, but I feel like with prep centers, right, especially if you are a beginner just struggling to find a good supplier that delivers to residential or commercial. I feel like if you are using a prep center in the beginning, you know, those fees are definitely gonna eat up all your yeah. profit, basically. So. The prep center route is definitely a good route to go to if you just want to make the business completely hands off. Mm -hmm. But you know, keep in mind, uh, you're definitely going to, it's going to cost you more, basically. Yeah. And especially depending on the categories, right? So like if you're trying to go in the beauty grocery categories, yeah, it's going to destroy a lot of your margins going prep center route. Exactly. Like for me, all my products, right, is are pretty uh, small and light. Well, small and right RIP, but you know, uh, they're pretty, they're pretty, uh, uh, low like, priced like you know but they're there. fast moving so i average let's just say like around 380 400 units per day so of just you know single products now right. if i paid a prep center let's just say 70 or 80 cents per unit man that would that would kill me right because i'm barely making that much profit on just those products since they're yeah. smaller and faster moving so uh you know paying someone 15 dollars an hour to do you know 200 units in a, in an hour is definitely way worth it than you know paying someone 80 cents to label yeah, and you're right, because 80 cents a label, I mean, let's say you say, what, 400 units a day? That's like yeah. 80 cents times 100, it's like, we're looking at like $240 just to prep those 400 units, which is exactly. insane. And, and 240 right? You could have someone work all day for you for 240 and do more than that. So that's yeah. how I can look at it, right? The only thing you have to deal with if you are uh, going the warehouse route or just doing it on your own is the logistic aspect. But, you know, I mean, that's it's pretty easy. Amazon makes it pretty easy to ship out products, whether yeah. if it's UPS or Freight Collab. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I got to ask, you're super young. So, like, uh, how are you able to manage, you know, handling employees and whatnot? Like, do you hire people that are a bit older than you? And if so, like, uh, are they okay, you know, working for someone much younger and stuff? Or how, hey, man, how does that go? The money talks, right? The money talks. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I mean, handling is, I mean, I'm pretty say uh, kind of hard or because I'm also a full time college student. Right. So oh, this is my schedule. This is what it looks like this semester, especially. Right. I have classes in the morning from uh, what did I say, 830, 930 to 145. Right. After I go to my warehouse, right, get some work done. And then in the night I have seven to 945 classes, which is uh, what sucks. But, wow. you know, 
uh, that's how my day to day is going. Right. It just going to school, go to the warehouse, get some work done. Uh, and then the weekends, it's grind time like today. Right. After after this call, I'm going to probably go to the warehouse. I, I called my employees. So and managing them. I mean, with this business, you know, it's not like you get products every single day. It's whenever you order them. So right. they're all part time. So if I need them, I just call them and then they just uh, come over to help me. And my employees, they're all other college students as well. So it's not like a bunch of older other people. So <laughs> college students, I know, I know, I remember that I told you the sauce, right? And her a couple of weeks back. But yeah, uh, college students, uh, genuinely, if they, if you just are looking for employees, just ask a few college students because they're willing to work for you, right? They just want to make some quick money. So, and the job you're giving them is pretty simple. You're just asking them to label some products, do the yeah. same thing over and over again. So even a baby could do it, right? Just give them yeah. a chair. Give them labels and there you go. You're done. Yeah. Speaking of babies, I mean, I've had even my six-year-old daughter help once in a while. I mean, it's literally simple as fuck. You just put it in a bag, put the label and you're done. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's pretty simple. Put some, you know, earbuds in, listen to music, watch a movie and get it done. So it's it's pretty simple. Yeah. And, you know, referring back to your college and stuff, uh, knowing what you make from Amazon already, because I am I mean, I assume your profit margins are good every single month. Like, uh, do you still plan on pursuing college? Like, is that something you plan on actually utilizing that in your lifetime? Or has Amazon kind of got you into the mindset of like, maybe I should just do this shit instead and, you know, screw college or, you know, how, how, how does that look for you? Man, 100% not. <laughs> so uh, I hate college, you know, I mean, it's cool. But I'm just doing it for my parents, right? So I'm a, I'm a junior right now. I have like a year and a half left. Might as well, you know, get it over with. So, but just doing it for my parents and I'm Indian. So, you know, man, they they always want a degree. So, you know, almost, almost done with it. I mean, if it was my choice, I'd be gone right now. You know, drop out right away. But uh, almost, almost done with it. So that, that's what I think. And then regarding just like college and or like the future goals, I mean, I knew I was never going to be like a person that works nine to five, right? Even before I started doing Amazon, right? I was working a retail job uh, at, at an amusement park, Knott's Berry Farm. And I quit that job before I even started making any sales. So I was like, you know, I'm just tired of it. So um, yeah. I just, I just quit that job. And then I went basically all in in this business, right? And the biggest thing, right? I like to tell people that many people give themselves something to fall back on, right? So either if you're working at nine to five or if you go to school or whatever, right? If, uh, for instance, let's say two or three months in this business, you're not finding profitable suppliers or profitable products. They're like, oh man, at least I got this going on for me, right? right. But when you give yourself nothing to fall back on, you have to make it work no matter what, right? And that's what I did. I was, I told myself, right? There, there's no other option, basically. You have yeah. to make it work. And here we are a year later, right? <laughs> Freaking making six figure months and shooting for what? What's your goal for this year? Like 1 million, 1.2? 1. Yeah, 1. Uh, so my goal was before, every, ever since I started was uh, 1 million sales before 21. I don't know if you can see, but you gotta hook it back here, right? So oh, that, that's my goal, right? I've that... had it uh, for a while, but yeah, that's that's my goal, 1 million sales. I think right now I'm about at, I think last time I checked was around 770. So maybe yeah. one or two, two more months. And then I should be able to hit that goal. Yeah, no doubt. You're basically like right there. At that point, you just need to spend like 120, 130K on inventory to get that revenue up like that. So yeah, you're basically going to be there, dude. Like That's crazy. Yeah, man. What about you? What are, What's your goal for this year? Uh, We'll see. I mean, because, you know, Amex kind of screwed me over by cutting our limits pretty big last year. So, oh, wow. Uh, and I don't want to take on any more loans or anything like that, you know, just to boost up those numbers like that. So mm. uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm hoping for 1.5 this year, but we'll see what happens. I mean, like I said, they cut off so much capital from us that it was, you know, this load us down, honestly. So, mm. but, you know, I don't mind it because it does give me time to like uh, just restructure the business again, mm. uh, focus on more products, cut off what's not working for us. And really just you know lower them down uh and just kind of you know maximize where our money is going to right because i'll be honest some of the products i bought last year i kind of just will buy like on 10 percent margins or five percent mm -hmm. sometimes just to like move the volume but mm -hmm. uh makes sense yeah because so the orange bars don't mean nothing if you're not making any profit so yeah. you know someone someone can be doing 20k a month but they're making you know 15k in profit you never know right or like yeah. 10k realistically <laughs> But, you know, you never know compared to someone doing a million a month and then their margins are like, what, 10%, 5%. Yeah. So 
um, yeah, it's really important to buy a uh, profitable inventory, not just buy anything to, you know, boost up those orange bars. Yeah. And back to the loan thing. Are you taking any loans? Uh, I know I just finished up my Amazon loan in February, so I just got done with one. What about you? Have you taken any loans or utilized any of that? I have. Uh, I think the last one they offered me was like a hundred k, but I'm almost done with that one too. So I don't got that much. I think I got like two more months or so of that loan. Was it a six month term? Nah, this one was like a I think like a nine month or ten month term oh, or something wow. like that. So it, it, they gave me some time. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm waiting for them to give me that hundred k loan. I'm <laughs> I'm about to accept it right away, man. <laughs> right now, yeah. I think I have an offer for twenty five k, but I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna accept Bloody it until you give me a higher offer. Yeah, I mean, usually if you decline the first one, they'll probably double that and usually on the next one. So, I mean, if you mm -hmm. get like 50K, I mean, take that even. That could probably, yeah, probably. That'll freaking boost your numbers for sure. Oh, I mean, in your experience, how, how have loans been for you? Have they been pretty helpful, you know, a little stressful, or how, how's that been? Because I know some sellers, they'll take these loans out, credit cards, max them out, and they end up stressing themselves more than, you know, what they probably should have. So, how, how's mm -hmm. that work for you? So loans, honestly, they've been the best thing for me because, you know, that's extra capital that you're getting just to spend. And especially with Amazon loans, the reason why I love Amazon loans, I mean, you know, might the interest might be high or whatever. But once you get that loan rate, you get it uh, deposited right away. And yeah. also when paying it back, you don't even realize you're paying it back because it's just cutting out from your, uh, you know, uh, the money that you're getting from your payouts, basically. So there, that's the reason why I love it, because I've had this loan for almost six months, but uh, ne never, you know, and then the day in those past six months, I felt like, oh, I have a loan because if you're making money, right, the money's just automatically getting cut from your payouts. So it doesn't really affect me as much, which is what I love instead of, you know, you having to physically go to your bank and then, uh, you know, sending it to someone else right. or yeah. out or friend. So that's why I love Amazon loans because it really doesn't feel like a loan after all. Just, just, you know, extra money for you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I mean, like you said, this is extra capital you're utilizing, you know, to basically grow your business and whatnot. And it makes sense, right? If you're making high enough margins, you know what you're buying, you know what you're going to sell, you know, why not? Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, because I know I wouldn't advise it to anybody who doesn't know what they're doing. Like, if you don't know what you're buying, you don't know what your margins are going to look, I probably would not take out that loan, honestly. Exactly. And with the loans, right, never do test orders with the loan. Only use that loan on products you know yeah. that are going to do well. So, right, there's no point of you just testing out a bunch of stuff that's not going to work. Only use that loan on a product that you know is going to do well and is selling consistently. And the only problem for you is not having enough capital. So that's when the loan comes in. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's a good point too, because I think I say some most Amazon sellers probably take out loans just to you know buy their test products that they want to test, and like you said, it's it can be dangerous. I mean, because when you're testing, you don't know if it's gonna tank, if the buy box is gonna suppress, if Amazon's gonna take down that listing for whatever you know dumb reason. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, you just never know. So definitely just buy it for stuff that you already know is working that you don't have enough capital for and that you're just, you know, selling on a month to month basis. So yeah. Great point, man. Yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time, man. So uh, we'll probably wrap it up soon, but uh, you know, just, uh, you know, what are some big tips or what softwares do you use in your business that have helped you grow, you know, to the, that the skill that you're going at, you know, because you're about to be a seven figure seller. So what are the, <laughs> you know, what are the tools that yeah. you use that can, you know, help someone else get up there? So three main tools I use is Jungle Scout, Rev Seller, and Keepa, right? And then um for shipping and stuff, 2D workflow, man. It's a game changer, especially the new update. I know I saw your video on it too. Man, it's amazing. So 2D workflow is great for shipping out products or pallets in general, right? And then um, the most important, I would say, is seller board. I mean, even though it's only $15 a month, you're actually seeing how much profit you're making, which is the most important thing. So those five would be the main ones that I use, I would say. Nice. So you keep it very simple, very short, nothing complicated. Yeah. What All about you? Which ones do you use? I about the same. Let me see. I got Keepa, obviously. We use Jungle Scout for the reviews. I mean, uh, the review is game changer, man. It's it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, one click and you're just like increasing your odds. So okay, yeah. it's amazing. Oh, what else? Uh, we're using inventory left at the moment, but honestly, I think I may switch to seller board. I'm just, I'm kind of getting fed up with it, honestly, in my opinion. So, uh, aside from that, 2D workflow, 
smart scale because we're trying to look for brands now. Uh, mm. Aside from that thing, that's really all we need. Uh, yeah, that's really all we need for you know our business. Uh, oh, and seller snap for our repricer. Mm, okay. Uh, good thing you're not using BQ, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but honestly like for this business people think even at like seven or even eight figures all you need is like three or four main software tools right it's yeah. crazy how someone that doing zero dollars in revenue and someone doing eight figures uses the same tools so yeah. it's not a you know it's not like oh there's a secret you're doing the same thing as the other person but the yeah. other person just has put in more time and effort into doing the thing that you want to do exactly yeah 100 man and like not to mention, I always see beginners. They they would always tell me, you know, they're starting off with like TA or this and that. I'm just like, dude, like <laughs> you don't need all that software, dude. Like just keep it short, keep it simple, mm-hmm. just source. You know, like uh, I think the problem is that people try to make too many shortcuts to find their first products, and so you know they'll buy whatever to find it. But it's like, dude, you re- you just need to put in the time, honestly, bro. Exactly. Yeah. And many people try to shortcut it. We're like, oh, maybe I'll hire a VA, uh, VA right? <laughs> uh, but don't the thing started, is, I'm <laughs> like, if you don't know how to do it on your own, how do you expect someone else to do it? It's crazy. Yeah. Do you have any VAs for your business currently? Yeah, we have two of them <laughs> currently. Do you? No, man. Just me. Oh, damn. Look at this. Yeah, so, no VAs. Uh, and just solo. Show. Yep. Because <laughs> I feel like this is what I think. Even if I did get a VA, right, and they find me a bunch of products, I'm barely, you know, struggling to keep the products I sell in stock. There's no point of me going, getting new products. So, uh, you know, and even uh, without a VA, I have a list of products that I could potentially buy, but I never get to them just because I had to keep on restocking the ones that sell. Wow. So a great problem to have, but yeah. you know, no VAs for me. Great problem to have. Nice. So, I mean, your expenses are fairly low then. I mean, aside from, I guess, like uh, managing your warehouse and stuff. So, but not not bad at all, dude. I mean, no VAs. Are you, are you planning ever getting VAs down the road? Uh, maybe yeah just for all the admin tasks but like even right now there are some days where i'm like man i have so much free time <laughs> right there there's no need for me to get a va right now but eventually down the road yeah definitely yeah for sure especially when you you know life starts taking up more of your time yeah it, it makes for <laughs> more sense like i know for me gonna, oh good no yeah uh like for me i just have the vas just, you know, just to give me more family time over here and you know free up more time so you know that's why i did it but yeah go ahead dude yeah. oh yeah i was just gonna ask are you planning to go to asd in march i think last, next next month well like i told other people uh my wife is actually due any day now at the time of this video so <laughs> she'll uh i'll need to like kind of stay and you know help her recover and you know manage around another uh, prepper for the family <laughs> <laughs> but no man that's that's great news congrats yeah thanks uh so you know that aspect is the main reason why i probably won't uh but i'm thinking of you amazon united that one looks pretty yeah me too to man to. yeah it definitely looks great for networking and stuff i was planning to go last year but I, I didn't get a chance to i think something came up but i'm definitely planning to just to network with other sellers and it's actually great for just learning more about amazon in general yep amazon wholesale like i think they have like speakers of different perspectives and whatnot like yeah mm-hmm. so definitely worth it i mean I, I don't think it's even that pricey right i think it was like i think right now the p- uh, tickets are on pre-sale so maybe yeah. cheaper right now so yeah i think it's like 200 or something so that's not even that bad honestly exactly and you're paying 200 for some some value that's gonna you know be worth millions so yeah it's a no-brainer for sure like for sure but yeah so dev uh if you don't mind me doing you know just wrapping it up and stuff uh, where can people follow you you know what social medias are you most active on where can people follow you your journey or even reach out to you yeah so the main uh, social media platform i use is just uh instagram right at buy box winner same thing with twitter at buy box winner underscore and those are the two main ones i use also on tiktok buy box winner but if you if you do want to reach out to me or i have any questions instagram would be the best place for me to for, reach, for you to reach out to me yeah, same here. I don't know why, but Instagram is more like the go-to for me. I like yeah. using it more. It's, it's pretty yeah. simple. Like I'll get them on Twitter and stuff, but I always like put those to the back end, like for some yeah. reason. So, but yeah, well, Dev, uh, you know, thanks for being on in the call, man. You know, great to know about your journey, about you know some stuff on you. Uh, you know, hopefully we can follow up, and by the next time, you know, you're a seven-figure seller already and just crushing it. <laughs> exactly. We'll meet again once I hit those seven figures. Yeah, no doubt, man. But uh, thanks for coming on and, you know, we'll see everybody on the next video.